you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T with a tutorial today on solids of revolution, and we're going to be using calculus to be able to find the volumes of these solids. In our previous lessons we've talked about using definite integrals to find the area under a curve so we're finding a two-dimensional two uh, object in its area and today we'll be expanding that to three dimensions. Uh, for the types of solids that we can find volumes they're called solids of revolution because we will be uh, rotating a function or a curve we're going to be rotating it around the x-axis so you need to think of it coming out towards you and around and going around so if we uh, rotate this line at y equals 3 around the x-axis what kind of a shape do you see so maybe if we fill in this is going to come around down to 3 not very good, down to three and back. So we are going to be forming a cylinder. Now when we do the volume, we won't be finding the volume of this infinite cylinder, but we would be starting at some x value and going to some y value. So we would be <coughs> finding a, the volume. So we could use this to find, say, the volume of a can. Okay, what shape, if we rotate this around the x-axis, what shape do you see? Now, when we get into doing these, it's not absolutely critical that you can visualize these shapes, but I think it helps. So, again, we would be rotating this around the x-axis and this line's here. So, we've got that. And then on this side, we would be, it's still rotating around. So, you can see here that we will have... A pair of opposing cones. So if we started, say, integrating from 0 to some value of x, we would be finding the volume of that cone. Now those two shapes are geometrical shapes and we don't need calculus to find their volumes. We have geometrical formulas for finding uh, areas, I mean volumes of pyramids and uh, uh, cylinders and such. But what about this shape? What shape do you see if we rotate this around? And again, hopefully you can see, but what I see is kind of a bell shape. So this is going to be kind of the bottom of the bell. And this shape would be end up on this side. So we're kind of looking at a bell, looking at it from the side. <clears throat> and... Uh, we would be able to find the volume of that. So we don't have a geometrical formula that's going to find this specific volume, but um, uh, using this method, method, we'll be able to do it. Now, if we look at this, uh, if we think back to, let me clear this off the screen here. If we think back to how we found uh, volumes, I mean areas, we, I introduced you to a technique of forming uh, rectangles. So this rectangle here was going to be zero height. Here we would be forming a rectangle. And here we would have another rectangle and so forth. <clears throat> if we use these left rectangles here, we're going to have quite a bit of error. Remember, we made it more accurate by making these uh, rectangles uh, skinnier and skinnier. So let me just draw a uh, rectangle in here, a smaller rectangle. We'll just put one of them so it doesn't get too busy. But what happens to this rectangle as we rotate it with the curve? So this is going to come down here. Remember this is rotating out, so what we're going to end up with is a Now I'm drawing it in perspective here, but remember this is our rectangle coming through the center and we're rotating it. So what we are forming is a cylinder. 
And if you remember what we did is we used calculus to do two things. We summed up all of these rectangles, so now we can sum up all of these cylinders. And, uh, and we use the definite integral to essentially take the limit of this width as it gets infinitesimally small, so that width is going to zero. Now, just to refresh the volume of a cylinder, if we call this, say, the height of the cylinder, and this is the radius of the cylinder. Remember, the area of a cylinder is the, I mean, the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base, which is pi r squared, times the height. So that's going to be the volume of a single cylinder. And the radius is going to here. So remember, this is going to be f of x is this height. So our radius is going to be f of x. So we'll be squaring that. And this w height is going to be, as we do the calculus, approaching 0. So kind of we can go ahead here where, again, I did this on the previous slide, but we have all of these cylinders here and the individual cylinders. And again, just to come to the bottom line on this, we're going to sum up using definite integrals all of those cylinders. And again, the h disappeared here because uh, essentially that's this dx, that's this delta x, which is approaching zero. So this is our radius, and it's squared, and this is essentially our height. And when we integrate, we're taking an infinitesimal height, and we'll pick some uh, beginning and end points on our area, so let's, I mean our volume. So if we go back to our Bell problem and we wanted to find this, we were told that this curve went from 0 to 4, so those are going to be our integration limits. And then we've got pi and then our f of x squared. And we can use the graphing calculator to evaluate this definite integral. So our volume is 14.36, and whatever these units are, remember it would be units cubed, so like cubic inches, cubic centimeters. So let's look at another example here. So we can see here that this is a <clears throat> parabola, and we're going to revolve it around. This is the x-axis, so this uh, formula we have now is for revolving around the x-axis. We might talk later about if we want to revolve it around the y-axis, but it's uh, simpler here with the x-axis. So to find this volume, we're going to integrate. Now we don't know the integral, so we've got to find our bounds. So let's bring a calculator in here and let's uh, enter our function. So we've got uh, 1 minus 0.25 x squared. And let's uh, graph that. So we might want to zoom in here a little bit. So the part that we're going to rotate is going to be this shape, this part here. So it's going to rotate around. So it's going to form like a skinny uh, football shape. So this is uh, at x equals negative 2, and this is at x equals positive 2. Uh, we could check that using our table to make sure that positive 2 is a 0 and negative 2 is a 0. We could also use our uh, second calc 0 function to find those. So we need to integrate from negative 2 to 2. And again, the formula is pi r squared, which is our function squared. That's squared. And then dx. Now, we don't have to worry about the absolute value in the area because when we square a function, we're always going to get a positive number. So in our calculator, if we're doing multiple area problem, I mean volume problems, we can put into y2 here, we can put in uh, pi. And then uh, parentheses and f of x, which is going to be y1. Remember, we use the vars key 
go over to y vars, pick a function number one. And then we want to square that function. So that's going to be our volume formula here. And we can now integrate second calc seven. And remember, since I'm using uh, y2 to be my volume here, I've got to make sure when I integrate that I've selected y2 here. And I want to integrate from negative 2 to positive 2. And we get a volume of 6.7 approximately cubic units. So let's try one last problem here. We have a, it says we're forming a spherical bead with a radius of five centimeters. And it has a hole cut through the middle of it, a cylindrical hole. So remember we can form, when we're doing rotation, we can form a sphere by rotating a semicircle around the x-axis. So we need a semicircle that has a radius of 5. Now we need that equation. So if you remember the equation of a circle centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals radius squared, which is case this is 25. But we want this as an explicit function. So I've got to solve this for y. And we get y equals square root of 25 minus x squared. So that's going to give us the top half of the circle. And we're going to be cutting a hole out of that. So we're going to let's cut it this way. And we're cutting here uh, that cylinder out. So remember on our first example, a horizontal line formed a cylinder. So our second function will be y equals 2. And we're going to be, since we're cutting out the hole, we could find the area of our cylinder, which is going to be the integral from a to b of pi times square root of 25 minus x squared squared. And we're going to subtract from that our bead, I mean our bead, our cylinder. And that's going to be pi times 2 squared. And we could combine these into a single integral because we have an integral property that allows us to combine integrals that are added and subtracted. So we're going to get here. We can GCF factor out the pi. So here we're going to have y1 squared minus y2 squared. So I put this in the calculator. This is going to go into y1 and y2. And our left and right bounds are going to be where this edge of the cylinder interacts, intersects with the circle. So we'll find that when we bring out the graphing calculator. So let's <clears throat> enter our functions here. Let me clear out these. So our circle, we'll put in y1. So we said that was second square root of 25 minus x squared. And our y2 was a horizontal line. So let's graph those. And our left and right integration bounds will be at that intersection. So let's find an intersection. And we'll find the one over here on the left first. They're going to be symmetrical. So we've got negative 4.583. And we would have another one here. Now we could use a system of equations and get our exact rat radical form of this and use in our calculations here, but this will be uh, accurate enough. And this one's going to be symmetrical. So our A is going to be that number. That's our lower limit. And our right limit is going to be the positive value of that. Now let's set up for Y3. Let's set up our 
uh, integration thing here. So we said we wanted pi and then times and now we want y1 squared so vars y vars 1 1 and we want to square that function and then from that we need to subtract y2 and squared and then close our parentheses so now let's integrate so we're going to integrate and we need to make sure we integrate our third function. Now this goes off the screen, but remember from when we did definite integrals, we don't need uh, that. So our lower limit here was negative. Whoops, I need to start that over again because I forgot to change here to y3. I keep making that mistake, so we want y3 up here. So now we want negative 4.5. 583 and we're going to go to positive uh, 4.583 and so we get our volume our volume here is approximately 403.1 and this were centimeters so it's cubic centimeters so good luck with working uh, volume problems, and we'll be seeing you around. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh.